What's up guys and gals, your host with the most griever as always, bringing you guys the Hunter's Guild Red Hood chapter number 9 entitled The Exam Begins. And honestly, this is going to be a pretty short review because overall I'm just really impressed by the new cast of characters we seemingly get. We get a couple uh, new characters, new camp participants that are going to play this cop and robbers sort of uh, uh, exam game, the, 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 di the disembarking, the debarkation exam. I don't know how to supposed to say that word. But either way, um, so at the beginning we're just jumping off where we do last chapter. We don't jump away from anybody. All we see is that a bunch of people have the same idea. There's 30 participants and every 24 of them, two dozen of them, decide, okay, that means we got to run for two hours. And Vilu and a few others, actually Bonkers is there himself. Bonkers is there and Vilu is there along with a couple other camp participants. Uh, we got introduced to uh, Miguel, uh, we got introduced to a, uh, a juggler girl from the circus using circus flying wire art, we got introduced to a, another individual who uses some type of uh, like alchemy chemistry sort of idea, mixed with magic maybe, who knows, uh, but either way we get these, uh, this six of them actually end up staying behind. I believe one of them is the uh, is the guy with the glasses or whatever who's th who's thinking very logically, who's thinking, "Hey, we can all pass this test. There's there's more to this test. This test where the prey like they go around the once again, this is like where the dialogue comes in heavy and I I'm just going to tell you guys read the damn chapter. But like the first chapter really goes heavy on dialogue to explain away a lot of the reasoning. This chapter does the same thing and to summarize, they basically say this is a hunter's exam. Why are we the rabbits? How is that testing our abilities? That makes us prey. How are we hunters if we're only going to be the prey? We're, if this is a hunter's exam, we need to turn them into the prey. We're the hunters is basically the summary. They talk about this way more in detail and it's done extremely well, but that's the long and short of it is what goes down here. And honestly, Really good. I didn't really expect this. I didn't really have any theories coming up with, okay, how is this going to go down? Who's going to run? What's going to be the criteria that they're actually looking for? I knew there was a hidden agenda, but the fact that these six characters automatically realized there's, there's something weird about this. So they're giving us a five minute head start running around for two hours. And it's just not going to, it's, that doesn't make sense. Why don't we stay and figure out what's actually going to go down? And what they realize here is um, a lot of the people, they, they run away. The two, uh, the, the brother and sister, uh, the Tetley uh, brothers, uh, or brother and sister, they run. They run away and they say, no, you guys are crazy. And this is probably why they never passed the exam. They've probably gotten to this point multiple times, but they never passed the exam because they didn't think like this. And you can see that Debonair is very happy, smiling. Oh, ho, ho. Thinking with your, with your heads and stuff like that. Now... This is where Vilu uh, recognizes all this and basically says, if this works, we can all pass the test. Like, I'm not sure what's actually going to happen here, but I've got a funny feeling. So you guys run, go ahead. But if I get captured, could you save me sort of idea? And this is where, like, Debonair actually says, like, you've still got three minutes left. I know you are, like, and they don't attack because once again, five minute head start and said, you guys are obviously plotting something, but... Like, you've got three minutes. You might as well talk to each other in secret. Get a strategy meeting in the three minutes you can. Talk. You, the six of you all came to this of your own volition, your own conclusion. So clearly you're all roughly thinking the same idea. But you got three minutes basically to polish the idea. So go ahead. Um, they say thank you. And then Grimm tells Debonair that you're spoiling them with that information. But Debonair counters this with they're thinking for themselves and making decisions based on their own choices but individually did that and all came to the same conclusion to just stand firm. That's way harder than it sounds. And a big part of this exam is seeing if they can do that. It individually think like hunters, think as an individual, but also come to the same conclusion as your fellow hunters. It's sort of the message that they're going with here. Like, uh, you have master hockey players, master athletes, master um, uh, craftsmen and stuff. There's certain rules, master cooks. That you have certain things that all of them will roughly come up with. Not that they, you can't be an individual, but automatically a great, a, someone who's great at their craft 
will usually reach a lot of masters of their own craft, regardless of what the craft may be, fundamentally reach a similar conclusion a lot of the time. Great scientists, great minds think alike is the old adage, and that is basically what is happening here, is that hunters, while we're all individuals and we all have our own style and our way of doing things, roughly we all have the same wavelength. We all have the same mindset, and then, but it might differ slightly. The sine wave might be a little off, but it's not out to left field. Most hunters think this direction, this tunnel, you know, so... Yeah, I, I just really like the chapter delving into that sort of psyche stuff. And it's surface level, but the deeper you look into it, the more psychological this chapter gets. And I definitely do like that. So they have the strategy uh, meeting and stuff, and then the cops are on duty after three minutes. Starts off really, really quick. As I said, we meet the other characters. We meet Nulo uh, Zhou, uh, or Zhao, uh, who's a camp participant who sucks his hair back and uses this wind technique that like some weird, crazy, uh, mystical elixir. And it's like a hundred days in the fires, a thousand days of preparation and using the herbs and spices of my people, you know, and now the great gale winds of power and actually manages to stop debonair in her tracks. This is where then we get the circus juggler, uh, combatant, the, uh, the young, uh, girl named Porcheren, Porcheren. Uh, and she's like, to do with the wires sort of reminds me of like Walter from Helsing sort of idea or like the flying trapeze of like Robin from Batman and stuff like that like constantly using the wires and manipulating the wires constantly out of their body or Basilisk the ninja story much better ninja story than Naruto if you guys are interested in an actually good ninja manga and anime go watch Basilisk um, and then they had eye powers too except done better Anyways, uh, and then we jump into uh, the, the rest of them. Bonkers goes in and can't seem to stop Grimm and stuff. And they're like sort of questioning, like, you think that just rushing us was going to do it? And it's like, nope, nope, it's not. We get a little flashback of their strategy meeting and Vilu, and they all were thinking the same thing. Vilu is the one who sort of comes up with it or says it out loud, but they were all thinking it. The handcuffs. There's that little weird rule about once they cuff you, you're done. They also count out that there's only four sets, five sets of handcuffs per character. So clearly they have a way of getting more handcuffs. But if we manage to get... So I'm curious now, if they put them on the defensive, they're going to have to rush to get more handcuffs. It doesn't matter if they beat them black and blue. If they don't have the handcuffs, then they can't put them in the jail. They can't fail the exam. So basically, what they're going after right now, we see Vilu and, um, and Pusheren going after the actual handcuffs on Debonair's belt and Grimm's belt. They have this set of handcuffs. It's time to jump for it and go after it, right? Like grab the handcuffs. So that makes actually a lot of sense. They're doing a sort of a, a, a three on three here thing. Uh, Debonair is facing um, Miguel, uh, Nulo and uh, Porcherin, and it seems like Bonkers and uh, the other fella and Vilu are going after Grimm. So they're just trying to split it up and get the handcuffs as quick as possible. Sort of reminding me, once again, bringing up a Naruto reference here, get the bells from Kakashi, right? That's the measure. They can't beat Kakashi straight up. They can't run from Kakashi straight up. The deal is get the bells from Kakashi. That's the point, right? So... Here, they're basically doing the same idea. If we grab all the handcuffs and we collect the handcuffs, then they can't arrest us. Then they can't, we can't fail the exam. So curious how this is going to go down because they also acknowledge if they only have like five sets of handcuffs, how are they ever going to... Now, I'm curious about one thing. I, this might be a translation thing, but I thought, okay, you handcuff a prisoner, you put the prisoner in the jail, then you release the handcuffs and you go after another one. I didn't think that everybody necessarily needed handcuffs. But uh, apparently that seems to be the case. I could be wrong about this because they only count five pairs. There's 30 combatants. So, you know what I mean? Camp participants. So, very, very curious to see what the next chapter is going to do. I, I, there, there are so many, like, are they just in a storage locker? Or is it the way I said that, like, they're, they're taking this a little too literally. And it's like, yeah, once you're in the jail, I can release the handcuffs and use them a second time. Because they said you need to, a free participant needs to tap someone who was in the jail. Because they automatically, the moment you cuff them, they go to the jail. You could take the cuffs off, you still have to go to the jail. As far as I read the rules, but that might be a little nitpicky. 
I'm, I'm curious what you guys think about this. Honestly, very good chapter. Very exciting. Liked it. Looking forward to chapter 10. And I hope that everyone is having a great time with Hunter's Guild because nine chapters in, the weakest ones were two and three. It's been, chapter one was amazing and two and three were a little lacking. But then since chapter four, it's been boom, 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 boom. It just keeps getting better. So I think that realistically, everyone should really be getting into Hunter's Guild Red Hood. If you like a good shonen, if you like a good adventure story, if you like the steampunk sort of idea, the abilities, uh, fairy tales, I think that this is right up your alley. If you like Castlevania, if you like Helsing, if you like any of that stuff, it's got that same sort of feel. So, But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as our fourth thing, as always, we say drink responsibly, as always, as I always do. We'll see you back here next time for Chapter 10 review of the Hunter's Guild Red Hood. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you next time.